Hello nurses, this is Camp with Nursing Camp and today I'm going to cover tachycardia and the heart rate and the heart assessment. This is from my Crack in the Code book on cardiac. Most patients do wish. Reasons for a high heart rate. Also further identified through my sticky notes on heart rate. Okay, here we go. Alright, so reasons for heart rate. Heart rate in questions are always about questions about whether you know, as a nurse, on the NCLEX, whether it is normal or abnormal. Heart rate is normally 60 to 100. However, in my class, I teach greater than 90. Greater than 90 is acute because it doesn't make sense for a little old lady who's sitting in a uh, bed and has a high heart rate. It doesn't make any sense. So, therefore... Recognizing that boat coming, the boat is a problem leading towards an intervention. An intervention that requires a further assessment of why the high heart rate is there. Now, in the NCLEX, however, greater than 100 heart rates in questions are always questions about whether or not you know this is a normal finding or an abnormal finding. If it is a normal finding, then therefore there's generally not an action or an intervention to be required. It's generally a documentation or an expected finding. However, abnormal reactions is further data to identify that this is an ongoing problem that should require some sort of intervention. So let's get into it. The first one is medications. Medications like albuterol is a beta-2 agonist. Beta-2 meaning that there's two betas, beta-1 and beta-2. Beta-1, one heart. So we have one heart, it's beta-1. They affect the heart. And then beta-2, we have two lungs. Oh, that's supposed to be a lung. Not sure what that is. <laughs> beta-2 has two lungs, and that's beta-2. Well, albuterol is a beta-2 agonist, but it's non-selective, which means that it also stimulates the heart. And that heart rate starts to increase, and next thing you know, they have a high heart rate after albuterol. That's important to know because in the NCLEX, if you have a high heart rate and albuterol in question, that is expected, and that is not an acute action. We just continue to monitor, and we do not call doctor, and we do not question. We look at the question and the data of the patient. Next, oxygen deprivation. Well, oxygen deprivation, well, the body requires oxygen, the brain more specifically, and when the patient is in, in a deprivation and they're not breathing, there's a problem. So, obviously, there's a problem. 96 to 100 is a normal oxygen saturation. However, when it starts to drop down to, you know, 92, 93, and so on, there becomes a problem. The brain says, wait a second, why am I not getting oxygen? And it starts to wonder, you know, hey, heart, can you start to speed up and can you increase to give me more perfusion. And so the underlying causes is that this response is the brain's response to the heart to increase the rate. And that is further data saying that, hey, there's a problem with oxygenation. But you need further assessment requiring the nurse to pay attention to heart rate. The next one is sepsis. Now, sepsis is, is interesting because it's twofold. The first thing is high temperature will increase the, the heart rate because the parasympathetic sympathetic response. When a patient has a temperature, it will start to increase. And then the next thing is, is that the brain doesn't start to get to perfused. And that's because in sepsis, you know, they start to vasodilate. And when they start to vasodilate in these vessels, there's not enough fluid. And what happens is not enough fluid being perfused, and that brain says it's not getting any perfusion. So then, therefore, the heart rate's response is to start to increase. And next thing you know, heart rate increases, and that's a sign of, um, of assess your patient and figure out why is that heart rate high. Next one is thyroid. Now, thyroid is important because I like to think of tachycardia hyper fast and so it is hyperthyroid hyperthyroid um, patients 
because of the thyroid medications and the regulations, will have a high heart rate. So if you have thyroid meds, like Synthroid and different things, and you have an elevated heart rate, or you have the patient with a thyroid storm or issue, um, that is acute. And it should be evaluated and a cause of this high heart rate. Next is pain. Pain is a sympathetic parasympathetic response, and as the body reacts to this pain, it will therefore increase the thing as an expected finding. High heart rate means that the patient should be assessed, assessed for pain, and also assessed um, in Medicaid if possible. However, in the NCLEX, you know, generally uh, medications tend to be psychosocial in nature, which means that they tend not to be priority. You're not going to die from pain. However, we are told in school that we should always be medicating for pain. However, in the NCLEX world, it's usually about what's going to kill your patient right now. And we don't really focus too much on that they're going to die from pain. All right, next one. Um, do. Dehydration. Dehydration is causes problems because of, once again, like sepsis, there's not enough volume. If there's not enough volume in the vessels, the next thing you know, the, the body, the brain's going to say, wait a second, I'm not getting enough, therefore it's going to increase the heart rate, and then therefore it's another identifiable data. Next one, orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic hypertension covered in another lecture basically is called 20-10-10. 20 systolic changes in the blood pressure, 10 systolic changes in diastolic, and 10 in the heart rate. So what does that mean? Well, when a patient is sitting like this and they're lying first, and then we sit them up, and we sit them up and then we have them stand up. If we they'll generally get dizzy, and that's orthostatic, and that's because of you'll have variations of 20, 10, 10. And the problem with that is, is that it goes back to volume. When you have a vessel that is sitting like this and there's not enough fluid, it can't handle these shifts of the body moving up. And what happens is, is that that person will start to plummet and start to get dizzy because. The volume is not there, and this volume can't handle these shifts. Next one, withdrawal. Okay, withdrawal is a common finding with um, with heart rate, and that's a first indicator. That's how we start to monitor a CWA scale or an AWA scale, which is withdrawal principles. Next one is infection. And an infection we talked about before it, with um, sepsis, and that will also increase um the heart rate. It's identifiable data. Next is, this might be coupled with a CBC where the white count is elevated. All right. Next one is the sympathetic nervous system. SNS. And, and that's what this is mainly about. These high heart rates are responses by the sympathetic nervous system for the heart rate to go high in response to these underlying causes. And the last thing is hemorrhage. Bleeding, 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 bleeding. When a patient is bleeding, there is no volume. Therefore, um, heart rate will start to increase. So in the end, when we're looking at most patients do wish, we're looking at all causes for heart rate to be high. And when you're looking at NCLEX questions, whenever you see the heart rate is elevated, that's about these conditions. If you're in practice, you see greater than 90%, you should be asking a question, why is it high? And it's usually one of these causes of why it's high. So always assess your patients and look at what what's the underlying cause. My name is Nursing Camp. This is from my sticky notes on heart rate and cracking the code. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.